And with that, Andrea, it's all yours. Awesome. Thanks, Genesis. And thank you, Professor, for having us today at Southwestern College. And um, students, thank you so much for having us and for joining um, uh, today at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday. Really appreciate it. I know your class schedules and work schedules are super busy. So um, just thank you for investing into your future and your career. Uh, we hope we make this call or webinar worthwhile for you. Um, so quick introduction of myself. My name is Andrea. I am um, a campus recruiter at RSM. Um, and we're going to tell you a little bit more about uh, who we are, what is RSM, who is RSM. Um, but also that today's topic uh, for the webinar is what is public accounting? So um, I know many of the students who RSVP for this call. Um, I saw a lot of business, accounting, finance. Um, I also saw some technology majors as well. Um, so hopefully, you know, you'll get something out of this to learn about a possible career in public accounting. Um, and before we get started, too, I also have a sign-in sheet, um, kind of an electronic sign-in sheet. Um, if you just open up your camera app um, and uh, scan this on your camera app on your phone, it will take you to like a really quick sign-in sheet um, that uh, I'd love for you to fill out. And also I am going to drop that same link um, into the uh, chat box too once I stopped sharing my screen. Um, so if you don't want to do it on your phone and you want to do it instead um, in your computer, I will go ahead and drop that into the uh, chat box. Um, which actually, let me do that right now. Sign in link. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Um, so uh, today I did bring along some of my colleagues uh, that I get to work very closely with here at RSM um, and I'm going to have each of them introduce themselves. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Sam first. Thank you, Andrea. And uh, hello, everyone. Pleasure to be with you today. Uh, as Andrea mentioned, my name is Sam Mascareno. I uh, am the managing partner for the West region of our firm. So all the 11 westernmost states in the country, that's my responsibility, all the offices there. And uh, I uh, graduated from Hilltop High School right here in Chula Vista. I still live in the area. And uh, after high school, I didn't know what to do and I didn't know how the process works. So I went to Southwestern College and uh, I remember I took a class. Uh, I don't know what the class was called, but it was kind of like, what do you want to be when you grow up kind of class, like surveys, like how do you want to, how do you see yourself being dressed going to school? Like, do you see jeans and boots? Do you see a suit? And I'm like, yeah, I'm more of a suit and tie briefcase kind of guy back then. So it kind of started me on my journey to, um, to accounting and uh, finished my two years at Southwestern, transferred to San Diego State, uh, got a bachelor's in accounting and then went on to get a master's degree in tax as well. And uh, been in public accounting for 27 years. Uh, and with uh, RSM 19, the last 19 years. So great to be with you and look forward to sharing with you more here in a bit. Thanks, Sam. Now we're gonna turn it over to David. Hi everyone, how's everyone doing? Uh, my name is David Flores. I'm a tax supervisor uh, here in the LA office uh, with RSM. Uh, I was born and raised in Southern California, specifically East LA. Um, I I'm a military veteran. Uh, after my experience with the military, I ended up going back uh, to community college. Uh, let's just say my grades weren't the best coming out of high school, but I did manage to straighten out a little bit. Uh, I, I was successful in, uh, in community college and I managed to transfer out to USC where I did my bachelor's in accounting. Um, I've been working again in our state and local, I've been in the state and local practice for, uh, for the past five years. and. I really look forward to, uh, to conversing with all of you today. Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Awesome. All right. Well, my name is Alejandra Alaniz. I am originally from Washington State, a very small town of 19,000 people. But I now live in East LA where David grew up. And I'm so excited to be here just because of the community and everything. Um, so I'm away from family, but I really like to get involved with our recruiting efforts. And also I'm in part of a Alpha, which is a Latino business student organization. 
And that's where I really like to recruit because I kind of fell into public accounting. Um, and I, you know, even when I interviewed, I didn't know anything about public accounting. I was just like, oh, cool offices, like nice area, you know? Um, so now I try, I've been in public accounting for seven years now. And I really try to like talk to students as much as possible to let them know about the various career paths there are. So you don't kind of just fall into it, but like take ownership of your life and move forward um, to create a life that you want, you know, whether it's a uh, eight to five, hang out at the beach early in the morning, or if you want to be, you know, grinding away, hustling and working in public accounting and just trying to become like the future Sam Mascareno partner of the firm, then let's, let's do it. Right. Uh, so that's my quick intro, but now I'll hand it over to Bethel. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. Um, I'm Beto Ariano. I'm an auto manager here in our LA office as well. Um, I was born here in Southern California, LA area. Um, I actually went to school up north in Northern California, went to UC Davis um, where I got my undergrad in manager economics. So I actually stumbled into accounting after I got my undergrad. So I kind of had a little weird route, um, went back and got my master's in accounting. Um, started my career in the San Francisco office, um, had a great four years there and recently transferred to the LA office last summer. Uh, so been here a little bit over a year, um, going into my sixth biz season. It, it's been a great experience. Um, time has just flown by, met so many great people at the firm and, and the experiences are, are just priceless. Um, so glad to be here, glad you guys could join us and, and just excited to be able to share our story with you guys. Thanks, Beto. Um, so before I turn it back over to Sam, uh, I wanted to put this out there that um, we are going to make this a very interactive presentation. Um, so that will be coming. I hope you are ready. Uh, but also furthermore, um, while we will have a Q&A session at the very end, um, I, I want to encourage you all, you know, if you have questions along the way to pop them in the chat box too, and, and we can do our best to address them live. Um, we'll all, uh, me and my RSM colleagues will be monitoring the chat box. Um, but if we can't get to them in your chat box, we'll definitely address them at the end as well. So um, feel free to ask away anything that comes to your mind. Um, so now, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Sam. All right. Thank you, Andrea. And uh, to, to the topic of our discussion today, what is public accounting? So you probably hear uh, the term kind of thrown around. And usually when people speak of public accounting, they are talking about firms that serve the audit, tax, and consulting needs of, of clients. And those clients be high net worth individuals. It could be businesses across a, a gamut of different industries. It could be not-for-profit organizations or even governmental organizations. So it's, it's a wide range of services, but it's usually firms. Uh, and again, audit tax and consulting, which means it's not just accounting majors per se. Uh, it, more and more, there's all, all kinds of different majors that come into uh, firms like ours. So that's sort of public accounting at a very high level. And these firms range in size from very small one person CPA firms uh, to a few very large firms uh, that are, are scattered across the world, uh, such as ours. And we'll, I'll talk more about our firm in a bit. But usually, uh, again, it's a huge range in size from one person to thousands and thousands of employees in different firms. And, and uh, usually, public accounting firms are designated as such because they are typically comprised of a large number of certified public accountants. So typically referred to as CPAs and takes uh, a CPA, a CPA is a couple of things. One, you, you pass an exam, a board exam that's, that's standardized across the country, uh, administered by the states and also some other requirements. So to be, to have that CPA designation, it, it, it's a bit of a, an important designation within the world of accounting. And so usually people in public accounting strive to, um, reach that CPA designation because obviously it, create, it brings a lot of credibility to what you do and it just you know puts you in a, in a category uh, that's, that's very important. So beyond that, uh, obviously as people start in public accounting firms, uh, usually we would hope most of our, our, our folks, especially our, our best performers stay in the firm to become partners, owners in the firm uh, as I was able to, to do 13 years ago. Uh, but in, in many cases, many of our employees end up leaving public accounting and they pursue a career outside of public accounting, typically in industry, where they can go and become CFOs or controllers or other financial roles 
because one of the great benefits of a public accounting firm experience is that you, are, you get exposed to everything about business. You, you really get to understand how businesses work. You get to understand the different roles. You, you get to understand how the numbers play into financial statements and what makes a business run. And so that diverse experience, not, not just about the numbers, but also working in clients in different industries just prepares you and equips you in a very unique way to be a very, um, a strong value added asset to any organization you would go. So whether you decide to join a public accounting firm and stay there and become a partner and an owner of that firm or get experience and then transition to industry, it just opens the doors to, to all kinds of opportunities for you uh, in your future. Uh, the next slide just gets a little bit more into uh, kind of who our firm is. And so as I mentioned, uh, there's very small firms uh, just one or a couple people just serving clients in a small uh, location or in a city. And then you have large firms. Uh, in, in the world of public accounting, you'll often hear of the big four. And those are the four largest firms in the world. Uh, as, as size goes, RSM would be the fifth largest firm in the country. Uh, but we don't really uh, celebrate too much that we're fifth because that's not what we're after. We are the largest firm that focuses on the middle market. And what the middle market is for us is companies that have revenues between 50 million and 1 billion. That's usually our sort of our sweet spot of clients of companies that we work with, revenues between 50 million and 1 billion of revenue. And so some of the clients that we would serve here in San Diego, for example, that you might know are like St Stone Brewing Company. Uh, I'm sure most of you guys know Stone Brewing uh, in modern times and a, a lot of those sort of local companies. Uh, but we also serve companies like Costco on certain projects. So it, it runs the gamut, but again, middle market, which is what we specialize in as a firm. And we are by, by far the biggest firm focused on the middle market is at 50 million to 1 billion in revenue. Uh, our firm, we're in A7 cities uh, in the US. We have four locations in Canada and we're also in 120 countries around the world. So we have a huge network all over the world. So you will see RSM, uh, I've traveled several countries. Uh, it's always cool to see RSM offices in, in Paris. It's cool to see RSM offices in London in 120 countries. So uh, again, this, we're one of those firms that's sort of worldwide in the US. Uh, we're a 2.7 billion revenue company uh, this year. Uh, we're excited that we're going to get to a 3 billion in revenue as a firm. So we've come a long ways from where we started back in Iowa in 1926. So we're excited about 2026 because that'll be the, the hundredth anniversary of our firm. So we've been, the firm's been around for quite a bit. Uh, we have over 12,000 professionals in the US and getting close to 50,000 across the world. So that's kind of the, the nature of our firm. And as I said, public accounting, uh, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a tough industry in that um, usually to, to become recruited by a firm, you, ha you have to have good grades. So I don't wanna wait too long to say grades really matter. Having good grades, doing well in your classes, uh, getting used to presenting and, and obviously uh, getting the benefits. And, and you have a, a great program in, in, in South, uh, Southwestern. Again, the program's been around for some time. Uh, I was there 20, geez, 20, almost 30. Oh God, it's been a long time. Uh, so back then it was good. It continues to be good. And obviously, uh, under the leadership of Professor Martinez and other staff that you have, um, you have a great foundation. Uh, my first accounting classes were there. That's where I learned uh, my first and second classes. Uh, I don't know what the terminology is now, but 101, 201 uh, were there. And, and that equipped me to, to move on to San Diego State. So uh, great matter. I, I want to make that very clear. Grades are important because as the world of public accounting goes, the larger firms are the harder ones to get into. And so GPA really does make a difference. So would want to encourage all of you as you consider uh, your major, as you consider your classes, particularly uh, classes surrounding your major, uh, your, your grades do make a difference. So uh, definitely want to encourage you to do your best uh, so you can have options. At the end of the day, that's, that's the best thing we can do, position ourselves so we can have options uh, so that we can kind of determine our, our path. And I would tell you, there is a tremendous opportunity within public accounting. We continue uh, to need more people. We continue to recruit more people. And uh, it, it, you know, in 27 years that I've been in this field, uh, it's just been a, it's been a great journey. So I, I would definitely uh, encourage you to A, get good grades, B, uh, get good at networking. Uh, it, we're still in the people business, right? So it's not just about numbers. It's not just about 
calculations and spreadsheets. It's also about interactions. It's also about uh, your ability to communicate and to form relationships and to build networks. So as you are uh, at Southwestern and if you transition uh, or transfer to a four-year school after this, uh, you know, get involved in organizations, get involved in clubs, uh, just build a network. Uh, all those people skills uh, come really handy as you're trying to serve clients in your career. So that gives you a bit of a flavor of, of our firm. Obviously we have an office here in San Diego. Uh, we have about 120 people in our San Diego office and uh, you know, offices in Orange County, LA. Uh, the other cool thing about a firm like ours is you can start anywhere and go in everywhere. So if you say, you know, I wanna try Chicago or I wanna move to Boston one day or vice versa, there's a lot of transfers that happen. Uh, and because it's all one firm, the methodology is the same. So the way you learn to do things here is the same way we do them everywhere else across the country. So uh, mobility and flexibility is obviously very, uh, very much available. So with that, I think I'll pass it back over to Andrea. And I just want to say excited to get a chance to speak with you guys. Uh, I just think the opportunities in our world of public accounting are great. And uh, hopefully uh, we can help inform uh, sort of your, your path as, as you kind of decide uh, where, where you go from here. So with that, Andrea, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Sam. Um, that was wonderful. And hopefully you all can hear me. I had to switch my audio midway. Um, so uh, if you had any questions from anything that Sam mentioned um, just now about public accounting or about um, RSM and who we are, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, Again, we'll do our best to answer all the questions. If not, we'll definitely do it at the end. Um, but now, right, I mentioned in the beginning, there is an interactive component to this, um, uh, to this webinar. Uh, we will be doing a scavenger hunt um, and we're gonna be having four rounds. Every round introduces a new topic about public accounting, um, but we really wanted to make it fun. Um, and so in terms of the rules of this scavenger hunt game, um, when I when we go to round one, uh, you will have one minute to find the designated object that's going to be on that slide. Uh, when you return with that object, uh, type your name into the chat box. Uh, make sure you you send it to everybody and not just a direct message to me. Uh, that way, everyone can see who came back first. Uh, the first person to come back with that object wins the round. Um, and then also, uh, if you're that first person to come back, um, be ready to talk about your object uh, of what you brought back. Um, and if you are willing uh, to show it on camera, but if not, totally okay, but at least share what that object is. Um, any questions before we proceed? Okay, all right. So here we go, round one. Um, I'm gonna give one minute for you to find this object and it's find an item that most resembles what career you want to go into. Let me look at the chat box. be any item and there are prizes. I don't know if I mentioned that, but there are prizes that I we will be mailing to you. Okay, perfect. I think we have I think Alexander. Alexander. Yes, awesome. Perfect. Awesome. Um Alexander, I think you are the first person back to you. I, I see you put the object tie. Do you want to share a little bit about what career you want to go into and how a tie ties into that. Um, yeah, so I want to go into a, a white collar career and an office career and most importantly, um, more specifically, accounting and a tie sort of represents the dress code for that. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Alexander, for sharing that. Um, Alexander, if you want to, uh, now, you, can you privately message me your email address so that I can get your details and get you details to mail you that prize? That'd be fantastic. And thank you for participating. Um, so 
that is round one of the scavenger hunt. Thank you for participating to Alyssa and Minerva. Um, so in terms of, you know, what is public accounting? I, I know Sam, uh, he went into detail about what this career is. Um, but in terms of different types of careers in accounting that you can go into, there's quite a few. Um, you can go into government accounting where you work for government agencies. There's also industry or private accounting uh, where you are kind of like an internal accountant for that company. Um, and then there's also public accounting and that's really what we're focusing on today. Um, to piggy off back off of what Sam was mentioning about public accounting, um, public accounts are external accounts where uh, we provide services to a wide range of clients in every industry. So industries like consumer products, industrial products, financial services, technology and real estate, and more. Um, and so the, the types of companies, um, they could be very large public corporations, they could be small businesses, not-for-profit organizations, and even government agencies. Um, usually, the work being performed in public accounting is done to satisfy regulatory requirements for transparency, or it's to help a business, it's to help um, a company enhance their business. Um, so the different types of services that a public accounting career can include are audit, tax, and advisory slash consulting. Um, and, and there's many different options or specialties within audit tax and consulting slash advisory. Um, and today we are going to tell you a little bit more about these three different services within public accounting. Awesome. All right, so that takes us to round two. Um, where we will be diving into a little bit more about the career in audit, which is one of the public accounting realms. Um, and for this scavenger hunt component, find a magnifying glass or anything that's closest to a magnifying glass. Any, it could be, I know like some people found one at the end of their ruler sticks. Oh, excellent. I think we have somebody back. All right, I'm gonna have to open up my video so I can see all of your videos. Minerva, I think you came back with a magnifying glass. Do you mind showing us? Sorry, say, say that again. I, got, I think I got this wrong. What, what did you say? Oh, no worries. So if you found a magnifying glass, pop your name into the chat box um, for the scavenger hunt round and you'll win a prize. No, okay, no. that's okay. I'm sorry. No worries. Um, I know this might be a little bit difficult, so I can even bump it up to maybe even like glasses. <laughs> um, all right, pretty sure I haven't seen one in years. <laughs> totally okay. Um, Arlene, do you mind sharing, kind of sharing what you brought back, whether it was magnifying glasses or glasses? Hi, I found my glasses. <laughs> awesome. Usually don't wear Perfect. them, so how to locate them. Okay, perfect, good. That's part of the scavenger hunt. <laughs> I'm not awesome. competing, well, you, I'm not competing, but I wanna show you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my students know I'm blind from one eye and without it, I can't see a lot of stuff. So this is my magnifying glass. <laughs> just, I think that, I think that wow. would be the first prize. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm not competing. I just wanted to share the one I keep near me all the time. That's perfect. And you're more than welcome to play, Maria. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Um, and Arlene, uh, if you can privately message me your email address, I'll go ahead and get you that prize. Um, and now I'm going to turn it over to 
um, Beto, who is going to tell us a little bit more about what a career in audit looks like and also why, you know, why did we choose the object of magnifying glass as um, for the scavenger hunt round? All right, awesome. So try to give us a quick glimpse into what the audit world is. Um, might be a little much, but if you guys have any questions after, um, send them to the chat box and I'll be glad to answer them. Um, so just kind of, I guess, the general question, right? What's, what's an audit? Um, so annually, uh, for the most part, companies are going to release a financial report on how they did pretty much like financially with the numbers wise and also have disclosures on certain transactions or more information that they want um, the readers to, to understand. So what we do as auditors, we, we work very closely with these companies to, to ensure the, the contents um, or understand the contents of these reports and to ensure some of the accuracy. Um, one of the myths that I think goes around a lot is that we, we guarantee 100% of the, the information. Uh, we actually do not. We don't, we're not there being penny pinchers and, and making sure that it, every number is correct to the dollar figure. Uh, we have thresholds where we do look at certain accounts and or risky, uh, certain risk accounts, right? So we do have an analysis once we start the engagements to understand what we are going to look at into the company and, and make sure that the majority of the information it is presented fairly accurately. So when you as a reader goes in there, um, has, uh, has a good idea that the information is correct. Um, so why does a company get an audit? Um, so this could vary. Um, sometimes a, let's say investors, if you're investing money into a company, you might want to make sure that the information that that's being provided to you is accurate, right? Or let's say a lender. So if, you, if the company goes to a bank and asks for a loan to grow their business, a bank might require them to get an audit to, to ensure that certain um, financial information is accurate. Um, and, or if you're a government, governmental agency, um, just as a citizen, you want to make sure that the government agencies are, are actually using the money appropriately and, and it's being funneled correctly, right? Um, and some just do it because they want to make sure that they're properly accounting for, for everything and, and future benefits. Um, so what I like to kind of compare it to is, is when someone's selling the, <clears throat> selling the car, they're going to go buy a used car, right? And, and the owner of the vehicle is telling you, my vehicle has gotten an oil change recently. It runs great. It's, it's in the best shape ever. But you as a person that's going to go buy the vehicle, how do you know it's, it's burning as, as the owner mentioned, right? So you probably go to a mechanic, a third party, kind of like the evaluator, you could say, to ensure that the information that's being presented to you is correct. We're kind of like the mechanic in this scenario. Um, so what does kind of like the average daily life of an associate look like if you would, once you would start? Um, well, there isn't one kind of like typical day, right? Every day is very different, but what you will be doing is working very closely with the client trying to understand their business. You're, you're talking to people in the C-suite, so like the CFO, the controllers, the CEO, right off the bat to try to really understand how their business is doing, how to help grow it, and, and really just create that partnership with them. Um, you're also working with third parties, so like the banks um, or whatnot to, to ensure that certain balances are correct. And you're quite often working with your team on a daily basis. So we're not just isolated, just doing our own work and we never talk to anyone. We're constantly talking to our team so communication is a very, very big key um, skill that you will need to, to be successful here. So just kind of start working on that and keep that in mind. Um, we're, like I said, we're not just stuck in one room and not talking to anyone. We, we constantly talk to people. Um, it is a very client serving um, heavy industry. So I think a lot of the time people think we're isolated, but no, we, we, we work in, in teams quite a lot. Um, so what is needed? Um, for certification wise, um, like Stan mentioned earlier, you will need your CPA. Um, once you start uh, uh, going through your career, you will need your, your CPA to, to make its manager. Um, I suggest obtaining your CPA as soon as possible. Um, so even before you start or that first year, it's crucial to really study, put the time aside and get that CPA. Um, as you keep on progressing to your career, you're going to get more responsibilities. Um, you're you're going to be assigned a little bit more stuff. So it does get a little bit more difficult. Not to say it's not possible, but the best time I recommend is just get it done as soon as possible. Um, and we can obviously talk about the, the requirements more in detail later on, but at least keep in mind, CPA is going to be very crucial to your growth. Um, and what industries do we work in? And we pretty much cover any industry from gaming, from like e-games um, to gambling, uh, to banking, uh, financial services, not-for-profits, tech companies, real estate. 
essentially any industry you could think of, we, we pretty much put our hands on it. So we, we work on a wide variety. If you have an interest in a certain industry, um, talk to us. And, and obviously if we do have it in that office, we, we definitely encourage you to, to test out um, that industry. And obviously we encourage you to try different ones, uh, but we, we work with different types of clients, not just one type. And for traveling, um, it will vary just on the type of industry that you work in. Um, me personally, I do a lot of financial services. So I actually work from the office quite a bit. So I don't travel necessarily to client sites too much um, every once in a while, but I do have colleagues that I rarely see. I'll see them maybe every once a month or something like that because they are constantly on the road, um, going to the client side um, and, and spending a couple of days there. Um, you may travel out of town, you may travel out of state. Um, I know there are some in case in that where people do travel out of the country. So if you do like to travel and, and check out different cities on the company's pocket, essentially, there's a great way to do it, right? Because you're going to different cities exploring and, and you're obviously there working, but you obviously get to, to enjoy sightseeing a little bit. Um, so it's one of those nice little perks that comes with the job. Um, and what everyone kind of talks about, busy season. Um, our busy season for audit typically is from about January through April. Uh, that's where we typically have a little bit longer longer days. Um, we're typically looking at about 50 to 55 hours per week. Um, so not too, not too bad, I think, compared to a lot of, uh, of the other firms, but um, it, 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 it will be a little bit busier, um, as you could imagine. And the engagements will last anywhere from as short as two weeks to four plus weeks, just depending on the size of your company, um, if it's just a little bit smaller or, or the type of engagement that you might be working on. And for the teams, um, once again, similar to like the engagement size, um, it could be anywhere from working with four people to a team of like 10 plus people. So what you're typically seeing in an engagement, you have your associate, you have your seniors, your manager, and an engagement leader. Um, which at least rounds out your team at, at, the, at the smallest end. And in bigger teams, you'll have multiple associates, you'll have multiple seniors, multiple managers, and at times even multiple kind of partners on engagement. Um, so just kind of depending on your team. So once again, at that point, communication, communication is very crucial. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of like a quick glimpse into the life of the audit world. Um, I know that's a lot. Like I said, if you guys have questions, please let me know and I'll, I'll answer them through the chat for you guys. Can I ask you Thanks, a question? Thanks, Beto. Yeah, oh, please. yeah, go ahead. Is audit the first route into uh, working with RSM, or do you, you know, do different things, or how does that work? No, so you can actually start in any of the three routes. So you can either start in tax, um, consulting, or, or audit. Um, there are situations where people do transfer within the lines of business. So there are some folks that start in audit that may go to consulting. Um, which I think is a little bit more typical, um, but there are, I have seen situations where someone does start in tax and switch to audit, but no, you don't just start in audit. Um, you can start in one of the three line of business. Thank you. Great question. Awesome. Um, and that's why they have a campus recruiter like me. Uh, I specifically work with uh, recruiting uh, students um, or even professionals directly into our entry level positions in either audit, tax, or consulting. So you can start in any of the three um, with a bachelor's degree. Um, excellent. So now to uh, our next topic, uh, round three, which will be on tax, uh, led by David Flores, but to kind of kick it off, uh, find a calendar. Um, and hopefully this one's a lot easier um, it could be on your, I'm not even going to say it, it could, a calendar. Oh, I see that my chat box turning orange. Perfect. Um, is it Mayette? I apologize if I pronounced yeah, that wrong. Yeah, it's Please let Mayette. Me know. Yeah, you pronounced it correctly. It's Mayette. Awesome. And can you share what kind of calendar you have? Is it the kind that you flip pages I on have or one, is it the one, one on your you, phone? The one that you put in the fridge. <laughs> Nice. Very handy. Very, very handy to have it on the fridge. That's a good location to put it to. Awesome. Thank you so much um, for grabbing that. Can you privately message me your email address and we'll go ahead and get you the prize. Um, and so now I'm going to turn it over to David Flores, who's a tax supervisor. Um, and he's going to tell us a little bit about tax and maybe even why we asked you to get a calendar. 
Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Andrea. As she mentioned, my um, name is David. And as most of you have heard, or at least will probably hear somewhere in the span of your life, there's two certain things, death and taxes. You know, th that's the main one that everyone always falls to. And while we can't help you solve the uh, issue of death, we do try to help you the best way to solve all your tax issues. Now, when most people think about tax, you know, as students right now, and even your parents, we all think about the infamous 1040, your individual tax return. It's a huge topic of discussion everywhere. Um, but one thing when it comes to public accounting that while we do handle some uh, very high net worth individuals and in regarding to filing their own personal tax returns, when we talk about tax in the field of public accounting, what we're really talking about is helping businesses navigate through the vast labyrinth, which is the IRS, and figuring out the best way to help uh, our clients solve all their tax issues and what implications that may be. Now, as, as an overview of what tax is, what we really are are just problem solvers when it comes to this. Um, as you can imagine, and we, we probably heard a lot in the past couple of in the past couple months is there's always all these tax changes that have been occurring um, because of recent events and even uh, the president that came in a few years ago. So obviously this is where we come in. This is how we help our clients navigate and lead a successful business and even help them implement strategies for the upcoming future. When there's any type of tax legislation change um, right now, you know, speaking at the federal level, we have to come in and help see help our clients and have them see what's the next best choice for them with their business. Now, um, again, that may not people only think about the 1040, but if you really look into what tax is, especially at a firm like RSM, there are many different specializations in tax, and there's a reason for that because of the complexity that we're constantly involved on a day to day. And at the end, it really just becomes, uh, we become an everyday problem solver. Myself specifically, I specialize and have specialized for the past couple of years in our state and local tax group. Um, so while people specialize on like, what does U the US tax code uh, have to say and what can I use to, um, what tax code can I use to benefit our business or what do we have to report this upcoming year? I specialize in what does every other state say? What does California say about what, how you transact business here within the state? How does Texas uh, guide you through their own uh, filings and, and additional uh, whatnots that they have for their own regulations? Um, additionally, uh, sometimes uh, what people ask in regards to the tax services, do we travel? Uh, the answer to that is occasionally no, we, we don't. I have traveled for tax purposes, obviously, um, I've met with different people, uh, different teams mostly, but most of my clients are within LA. I work a lot with uh, private equity or financial services. So a lot of the clients that I do have and that I have met with uh, are LA based. I, I believe actually when I met Veto in person for the first time was actually at a client meeting uh, for a proposal uh, in which you know we were proposing our services to a client and we ended up winning it. So there are those times and occasions where we do go out and you know meet a client and all that. A lot of our work is really done in office and it's something that I really enjoy doing because it provides that consistency of where I'm gonna be um, from day to day. Uh, in regards to requirements for tax, um, it essentially covers the same thing as Beto mentioned earlier. We are still required to do uh, the CPA if we wanna get past a certain level. So if we're looking to make manager, we're looking to make supervisor, obviously we're gonna have to get the same qualifications. So in regards to all those other uh, credentials and information questions, what Beto covered earlier really is um, essentially the same thing you have to do for tax purposes. The one main difference that everyone talks about uh, in regards to the tax field is we actually have two busy seasons. Um, we all know the infamous date of 415. You know, you have to get your file and file your taxes by your due date. Uh, not given this past year with all the changes because of uh, COVID and all that, obviously, but our traditional sense is that we have a bit season that starts around the end of January, early February, and goes all the way up to 415. 
And then we have a second busy season, which encompasses uh, some of our summers. And so a lot of our client work um, might actually extend all the way to 915, which is, you know, September 15. And because I do state and local items, my, ex my deadlines actually extend just a little bit more uh, towards a 1015 uh, deadline. So October and actually one that we just passed with 1115 because of different, again, uh, jurisdictions. As a brand new team member in the in any tax practice, what you're looking at is not necessarily interacting a lot with a client, which is something you know that you see a lot in audit. But the same principle applies that you have to communicate excessively. There is a good, a, a decent, steep learning curve when it comes to learning um, your profession within the tax field, and because of a, the complexity and the abundance of rules and regulations that do exist. We ensure that as you come in as a brand new day one associate, we're just trying to integrate you with the team. The last thing we were trying to do is just kind of like leave you alone to learn it because we understand as supervisors, managers, how difficult it was for us to learn some of these items. And so it only benefits us to start developing a mentee and a mentor mentee relationship. One that can only develop with constant interaction, communication and efforts on your leaders that are leading the tax uh, projects to be able to teach you and guide you through the main nuances, whether it's technology questions that you might have within the firm or specifically any tax compliance issues that you might see on a day-to-day -day and consistently throughout your day, California being one of them. We obviously want you to know what California tax code looks like because you're gonna get a lot of questions about California. Everything else, we try to build it out as much as we can. Um, and, you know, and that's really just a major a high level overview of what tax does. Thank you, David. Um, one question that came in was, where do you get the specialization on taxes? Do you get it at school or at work? So the specialization on taxes, for the most part, you get it at work. There are individuals that as you're going through the recruiting process, based on the needs of the firm, they might guide you through, towards a particular industry or particular a specialization like international tax, uh, state and local, um, private client services where you're looking at doing those uh, 1040s and uh, for high net worth individuals. But for the most part, it benefits the firm to get you started as a generalist. And then as you progress through your career, maybe uh, your second and third year, you start looking at, you know what, I really enjoy this particular type of tax, or I feel more comfortable with that one. And so you'll be able to talk with your counselor, your guides, and some of the partners and your leaders to say, hey, I would really love the opportunity to uh, pursue this particular type of tax specialization, just like I did. So uh, again, that's why I've been in the state and local practice, and I work with our state local tax teams, not only here in LA, San Diego, Orange County, and all the way across to New York. And just to add to that, one of the cool things about public accounting is that when you work with a large company, for example, obviously they have domestic US tax situations or issues, and they typically uh, do business in multiple states. So they have multi-state issues and they typically have international operations, either they sell abroad or they manufacture abroad. So they have international issues. And oftentimes you also get to work on the owners of the company's return. So in one client, you are exposed to international tax, state and local tax, individual tax. And then within the entity structure, you might have a C Corp, an S Corp, an LLC or a partnership, and they all have different rules. So as you work with these types of clients, you get exposed to all kinds of different things. And as David mentioned, after a few years, you might begin to say, you know what, I really enjoy this aspect of it. I don't, I, or I really don't want to do that anymore. And so either by you love it or you really don't like it, you begin to sort of narrow down. Uh, and usually that's the best way because now you're making a choice based on experience as opposed to hoping that you like something that you selected in college. So that's, that's usually the better path. And as David uh, said, uh, this is the kind of the cool thing that you, you really get exposure to all kinds of different things. And then you kind of make your selection as you go along. Awesome, excellent question. Thank you, Sam and David. All right, so last but not least are, oh yes, question, hi. Okay, um, you, I, I am very interested in taxes and you mentioned that it's international and domestic. 
most likely I'm going for domestic, but my major is business administration and accounting. So I focus into accounting to get my bachelor's or is just a different uh, name in the career for going to uh, taxes itself? Uh, so one of the things, at least in my own experiences, you just have to be, and Andrea, correct me if I'm wrong, you just have to be eligible to uh, sit for the CPA upon graduation. So obviously an accounting degree and getting the 150 units would qualify you for that. And there's obviously a, a lot of little things that we have to talk about when it comes to being eligible to sit for that. Um, one of the things that I always tell people who might be interested in tax, but then they tell me, well, I've never done this, 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 and that um, in regards to the tax field. And I, I tell my own personal experience. And when I started um, interning in tax, I had no tax classes in my background. A lot of, you'll eventually get some of it. So if that might be one of your, your worries is like, well, I've never done international. I've never done state and local. And that's okay. We don't expect you to uh, have really any experience of, except for the fact that, hey, taxes exist somewhere in some way. Um, like anything else, and especially, and I'm pretty sure every other person um, here in the panel can um, confirm is the main thing that we're trying to get when someone tries to come in, work in any of our fields, and let's say taxes as an example, is we're just trying to find someone who is able to be trained, to be able to be receptive to us trying to give them knowledge and for them to apply that knowledge to what they're doing on their day-to-day -day basis. Because that's really how you'll learn. It's not like you could take as many classes as you want and that might give you some background knowledge, but at the end of the day, you just have to be willing to, to uh, learn from others. So okay. following my, my accounting, it's, it's good. And you say 150 units, you know, after, you know, you qualify for this, right? Correct. So I, I'm, I think what you're um, insinuating is that as long as you have the accounting degree, with, mm -hmm. and, sh and you're eligible to sit for the exam, yes, you should be able to um, be on the potential pipeline to you know, apply to RSM and a tax position as well, or any position audit uh, included. Thank you, David. And no worries. Yep, and I dropped it in the chat box too. Um, for those of you who aren't as familiar with 150 units that David was referencing, um, so for uh, our audit and tax positions at RSM, but not just at RSM, but at a lot of other major public accounting firms, they do require that before you can start full time at the firm, um, you do have to have the 150 units that's required by the state of California um, in order to be licensed with your CPA. You don't have to have your CPA license before starting with us. Uh, we don't typically, we, we typically expect you to get your license while you're working with the firm. Um, but what we do expect is that you at least finish the educational requirement component of the CPA license. Um, and so that's what the 150 is. Um, and so I linked it directly uh, into the chat box. It's directly from the uh, governing uh, body that issues the CPA licenses from the California State Board of Accountancy. Um, but, which is a great segue to consulting, um, if you do wanna go into consulting, um, the 150 unit is not required. Um, because uh, for most of the professions within consulting, at least at RSM, um, they don't require a CPA license. Um, some, it is nice to have a CPA li license to practice in some of our consulting areas, um, but I will let uh, Alejandra talk more, a little bit more about consulting. Um, and to kind of kick that off, um, final chance to win a prize, uh, find a puzzle piece, uh, or it could be a word search, crossword puzzle. Um, I know during the stay at home orders, a lot of people have been doing actual puzzles at home too. So whatever you can find, uh, first person to come back with any type of puzzle, pop it in the chat box. Perfect, Alyssa, thank you. What puzzle do you have? Oh, you, oh, you do actually have a 500 piece puzzle. Nice, <laughs> is it done? Have, have you completed it? Not yet. <laughs> You're working. Yeah, on I haven't. It. <laughs> I haven't even started it. It was a gift from my boss as a self care thing. So, 
throughout the pandemic, so but I haven't even started it. And I love puzzles, so I'll get into it soon. Perfect. Well, thank you, Alyssa, for playing. And um, if you can privately message me your email address, we'd love to send you a prize. Um, and now I'll turn it over to Alejandro uh, to talk a little bit more about consulting um, and why you know we chose the puzzle pieces as the scavenger hunt item. All right, thank you. And I will make this quick because I know we want to have a few Q and A um, time, so I will make it quick. So for consulting, I did include a little link to RSM. And as I mentioned, I think you guys are so lucky right now to be able to have like a consultant here, someone to audit and tax, because when I interviewed, I had no idea about public accounting. And I'm not gonna go into exactly all the service lines that we have when it comes to consulting, because I counted and we have over 40 different services when it comes to consulting. And so as Andrea mentioned, we don't need a CPA for, for at consulting, but we do need some type of certification and really just depending on what consulting line you go to. And I do want to highlight Arlene because she did add me on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn, um, make sure to create one and start your personal branding because that will be one way to kind of figure out more about consulting, right? So just like that link I sent you will be a good resource to find out all the different service lines, you know, and just like drill into them to understand like what they are and what would potentially be an, of interest to you. And then like, for example, I'm in technology risk consulting, but if it's cyber risk consulting that you're interested, you know, you wanna learn about penetration testing or just like firewall, there's such a broad thing. And I'm saying these words and I don't know much about it, but that's just how consulting is. So I'm just saying I can guide you to the right person that can speak more to it. And I think LinkedIn is a really good resource because we're able to like tie it to titles and be like, okay, this is the person that I can connect you with if you want to get to know a little bit more about what it is that their day-to-day -day looks like, right? Um, and so sometimes for some of our consulting jobs, um, I suggest that you do go through the audit route first um, just because of the type of service it might be. Um, so one example of one of our consulting services is mergers and acquisitions. So they're the individuals that are telling companies like, oh, this is the, you should buy into this company or you should not. And so one of the big things is looking at their financial statements. And if you have that prior audit background, it's really helpful. Uh, but for what I do, I'm in technology with consulting. I joined as, um, but I was a finance major, kind of fell into it. Um, for consulting, a lot of the times the things that people major in is business administration, accounting, mechanical engineering, political science, economics. Like it, it's very broad because there are so many different service lines. And just being part of this conversation and getting to know some of us is just one step towards um, knowing more about consulting services. So if you, we'll give you our information. If you have any other questions, um, you know, we're available. You can reach out to us. We're happy to answer any questions you might have. Awesome. Thanks, Alejandra. Um, also, I dropped some uh, additional links in addition to the link that Alejandra dropped in. Um, I also put some additional brochures um, that are electronic that you can view um, whenever you'd like. Um, and then on this slide too is also our contact information. So um, as Alejandra mentioned, you know, connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, it's a great, uh, social uh, network uh, to start expanding your network because you never know where LinkedIn, a LinkedIn connection may lead you to. But also here's our, our work emails. Um, we do monitor our email inboxes every day. So if you have any questions at all, um, or if you want to connect with us one on one, don't hesitate to email us too. Um, and we're happy to we're happy to meet with you individually. Um, so one question came in. Um, does consulting have the same opportunities for advancement as the other areas? Yes, so one thing I wanted to highlight is that the one thing I really like about, or one of many things I like about public accounting is that the career trajectory is very clearly defined. Um, so if you do well, you work hard, everyone starts at the associate level, and then you move up, you know, it's associate, senior, your RSM supervisor, manager, director, and owner. So your trajectory is very straightforward. You're like, if I, you know, kick butt, put my head down, do all the right things, you could be an owner in 
15 years, but if you take a slow path, it could take longer, or you can decide to go into industry um, because you're saying, you know what, public accounting isn't for me. And one thing that I don't think we've highlighted as much is that um, when you start off, you're doing a lot of the busy work, but as you progress in the career, you do start working um, towards, you know, selling products and um, bringing over more business. Um, David talked to it a little bit more, and that is one thing that um, does intrigue me. Um, but it's not like a requirement. You can still move up in very different ways. Um, but that's one thing I do like about public accounting is that who, you know, being an individual, bringing your own strengths um, is, is, is highlighted in this profession. You're not just sitting down, you know, moving paper, like who you are and what you bring to the table really matters. Awesome. Thanks, Alejandra. Excellent. Um, just wanted to say thank you so much for listening and playing along with us. Um, we definitely wanted to open it up for Q&A. Um, I'm happy to stick around too. Um, I don't have any meetings after this. Um, but yeah, what questions do you have? I know we've had uh, a good amount of questions come through um, in the chat box, but are there any questions that you'd like to ask live? Quick question for students who couldn't attend, um, whose um, email, or I can give any of your emails to anyone who may have a question or any, or shall I give uh, Andrea your contact info? Or Because I know I have students who were not able to make it today. Yeah, um, feel free to, uh, you can pass along my email address. Um, and I can direct it to David or Beto or Ale or um, Sam. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, any Anybody questions? else questions? Anybody else has questions? This is your chance. These are the people who have a handle on hiring you in the future. They can mentor you through your career at the university until you actually move into accounting. And as you can see, uh, they don't only hire accounting majors, they hire finance majors and maybe even possibly other majors. But I wanna thank all of you for coming today. I really appreciate it that you reached out to our college and uh, that we will continue working with you um, to support our students. One of the things I wanted to add, uh, Professor, is, is that uh, we're in the process of working on providing some scholarships mm -hmm. uh, and encouraging people to, to continue on this journey. And obviously, uh, doing well in your accounting classes is a big deal, and getting recommendations uh, from Professor Martinez and others is a big deal because obviously we rely on professors to tell us uh, mm -hmm. who the most talented folks are, the ones that are serious about a career. Mm -hmm. And I would tell you, a career in public accounting is, is really a life changer uh, economically for our families, I mean, for our communities. Uh, this, is, this is a job that in 27 years, I've never had to worry about mm -hmm. uh, my job because as David stated, death and taxes, right? I came out to the tax side. So good economy, bad economy, it doesn't matter. Companies need the services right. we provide. So it's almost, I don't wanna say recession proof, uh, but it's definitely re uh, recession resistant, I would say. And yes. so uh, always a, a great path and uh, anything we can do to help uh, you on your journey or, or encourage you to go along, uh, I would tell you it, it's, it's not easy, but it's definitely worth it. So I would encourage you to keep on going on. And if we can help in any way along, along your journey, we're here to help. So I promise that if I ever recommend a student to your organization, it will be someone that I have personal knowledge about their professionalism, their own desire to succeed on the job. And so far, my recommendations to other places are still employed and happily doing what they do in their careers. Um, so that I promised uh, to you and I really wanna thank you for um, you know, coming to our college. Pleasure, thank you everybody. Uh, Andrea, I have a question. Okay. Um, Go ahead. You mentioned that Okay, this is a question. Do you have any internship with less than 150 units? I have over 70. And I, you know, to go to school is one thing, but to go in the field is the real thing. 
That's one I wanted to experience. Do you have any such a thing like that? Yeah, great question. So in terms of an internship, um, typically, uh, so yes, we do allow our interns to intern before they have their 150. You only need the 150 prior to starting full time. Um, and so typically you can begin the application process for applying for an internship um, as soon as you've reached 90 units typically. So you can begin the application process. Uh, sometimes the application process, right, it involves several interviews, it involves networking. Um, so by the time typically interns uh, work with us, um, our interns are typically, um, they typically intern during their junior year if they're in a four-year program to reach the 150 units or our interns are typically seniors. Um, they intern during their senior year or after their senior year if they're on a five-year track towards their 150 units. So what I mean by five-year track is sometimes um, we have students who uh, get additional units to reach the 150 units by taking a master's in accounting or master's in taxation, or they get their additional units by um, just taking additional courses at their local community college, which actually is the route I did. I didn't do the master's route. Um, so uh, that, that's the typical timeline in terms of applying for an internship that so typically begins approximately when you have 90 units. Is there any particular uh, uh, units in the terms and class that you will prefer to have this uh, internship uh, person to have? Like uh, no, as long as it's well, as long as it's as long as it's towards your degree. Um, I mean, it, it it would be helpful if you came on board, you know, with hopefully financial and managerial accounting, and potentially intermediate accounting. But we recognize that like many schools have different programs that are in different that, that kind of offer classes in different uh, parts of the semester, and so. Um, I think as long as you have your basic financial and managerial, um, we can teach you the rest. I want to say, and I think my colleagues can attest to this too, is um, a lot of uh, learning audit and tax and even consulting, it's very much on the job training. Um, uh, like a lot of it, you can't really learn in school, but we do need you to come in at least with your basic foundations of your debits and credits um for the uh, audit and tax side for consulting um for consulting typically um you can come in with i mean consulting you do not have to be an accounting major you don't have to be the cpa license route um so our our consultants typically intern with us uh during their junior year um and in terms of what courses um we prefer courses that are applicable to that specific group that they're gonna be interning in. But again, most of it's gonna be on the job training. We just ask that you come on board as an intern, ready to learn, ready to absorb information um, and ready to uh, uh, just, uh, I mean, learn, like ask lots of questions um, and just come in with an open mind. Thank you. And one last question. Yeah. Uh, will you be sending Genesis the link to the recording for this session so that we can distribute it to our students? Yes, absolutely. I will, to everyone who's RSVP today, I saw that there are a few folks popped on a little late. I'll send this link directly to you. Um, Maria, I'll send it to all the faculty as well. Thank you. Um, we're just going to wait to make sure that it gets transcribed before sending it out. So it might be a few days. Okay, thank you. No worries. Any I have a question. question. Oh, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I was wondering, um, I'm not sure which route I would like to go to, but have you had an intern who's done like all three, you know, Brent, like tax, cons consulting, and um, what was the audit? That's a really good question. Um, I think it's definitely possible. Um, but most of our interns have come in um, usually knowing that they want to go one route. 
Um, but I have seen, I want to say a handful, really a handful in the four years I've been here, where I've seen interns do it in two groups because they started in one and then kind of like halfway through, they were like, Andrea, I think I made a mistake. And that's totally okay because of RSM and the size of the firm we are. Um, it's very easy for us to have conversations with the right leaders and to help you make that switch into the right group to intern in. So um, I think at most personally, I've only seen two groups, like interning in two groups, um, but majority of the interns uh, really do the bulk of their internship in just one, one group, either it's audit or tax or consulting. Thank you. And, and, I think and I really, thing, oh, or go for it, Sam. Oh, sorry. It, it was, David, sorry. No, uh, one thing that I would always recommend, and I know it was uh, part of the discussion earlier, is the recruiting process um, doesn't have to be until your senior year when you're finally looking for a job. Uh, every kind of like people already kind of made up their mind what field they want to try out as their internship. A lot of that has to do with the individuals you meet within the firm. So if public accounting is something that you might even be looking, and let's say, I'm not sure if you're a freshman, sophomore, or junior, but if you're a freshman and you're like, you know, maybe a public accounting is something that I do want to try out, then your recruiting process should start essentially as early as possible and really getting to know those individuals. That will have some uh, indication of which way you're going to lean, just based on your interactions with those people at those teams or that particular firm. And they'll be able to help you and probably give you a better, clearer image of what your day-to-day uh, -day could look like. And that actually might dictate how you choose when it comes to your internship. So even though you're still young within your educational career, I highly recommend not waiting on like, oh, it's time to look for a job. Let me go apply. No, your recruiting process should start earlier on just to get to know the potential firm that you could be working for for a few years or for your entire life, you know? Right. And I think to add to that, so, so a lot of this has to do with sort of how you're wired, you know, like, like for example, we said earlier, tax people, we tend to like the law and we tend to be in the office, right? It's, it's, very, it's, it's very sort of predictable. Audit folks uh, are, I don't know about our clients all the time moving around. Consulting folks are always traveling, always, you know, jumping from job to job, city to city. So a lot of it has to do with kind of your personality, what you enjoy. Uh, I knew I liked law and I liked being in the office as much as possible and kind of going to my desk with my pens and my pencils and my stuff in the same place. That's just me. So that worked for me. Other folks say, oh my God, I don't want to be tied to a desk. I want to be in a plane. I love to travel. I love to meet new people. Then, you know, so you factor kind of how you're wired as well as, you know, what area you enjoy. So as you take classes, you know, kind of pay attention to the difference because they're very distinct paths and uh, very different experiences. And at the end of the day, what works better is what you're sort of more inclined to enjoy as a profession. The last thing you want is a job you don't like, right? And so a lot of this has to do with you as well. Yeah, and just one last thing, I guess I could add, even if, if let's say you start in one field, um, it's not the end of the world. Uh, we do have opportunities to transfer. So like a lot of folks that start an audit, there is a lot of opportunities to, to switch to consulting. And, and sometimes those consulting paths require you to start an, an audit or it makes it a lot easier. So like if you're going into transaction advisory type deal, like it, it helps to have that audit background. So if you go into audit and you're like, you know what, I really like what the consulting people are doing. I really want to explore that. There is opportunities to do that. Um, I mentioned earlier, um, let's say even if you start in tax, you're like, oh, I want to make the jump to, to audit or to consulting. There's, there's obviously opportunities to do that or vice versa. So yeah, it, it is a tough decision. Um, obviously the earlier you start, the more exposures you get and, and the more stories you're able to hear. But if you do start in one line of business, it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to grow within um, and, and transfer to different lines of business. Thank you guys, that was very nice. No, no problem, Melissa. And I actually started in audit. Um, I, I, I studied economics. I went to UC San Diego, um, started in audit, did that for a few years, um, and then I realized I had a passion for working with students. So I came over here to RSM to specifically be a campus recruiter. So I put on events like this. I helped students through the process of interviewing and recruiting. Um, so th there are lots of possibilities. These are great questions. 
I mean, also, I want to say too, the questions don't have to be limited to public accounting. I, I've seen a lot of questions come through about LinkedIn too. So if you have any questions about that, or you want to know more about us, um, happy to happy to answer anything you 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 have on your mind. Oh, I see a question that came in. Uh, so for people who enjoy more interaction, would you recommend consulting? Um, I, I can take that, but Sam, I saw you unmute yourself. <laughs> I, I did. I, I was just saying, uh, Samuel, I like your name, by the way. Uh, if, if you like interaction, you could have just asked the question. You don't have to type it in. Uh, but uh, no, I mean, definitely. I mean, all the, the, the thing with public accounting is you're always dealing with people, right? So. Uh, so that, that, that's a must. Uh, none of us are stuck in a corner, you know, looking at numbers on a spreadsheet. So there's a lot of personal interaction, but I think more so than interaction with people, I think if you like to travel, if, if you like diversity, if you like a lot of movement in different scenarios and different, uh, you know, a different, uh, a different place every day, that yeah, consulting would be more your thing. If, if you like more stability and more predictability, tax might be more predictable. Uh, and, and audit's a bit in between. Uh, what I like about audit, even though I started in tax, what I like about audit is that it's great foundation for anything else. From audit, you can go anywhere, right? So it's a good starting point. I would say when, when in doubt, that would be a good starting point because an accounting background, an audit back will never hurt you if you go into consulting or tax. So um, it, a, lot, a lot of it just has to do with what you enjoy, but definitely uh, in any one of these services, there's a lot of people interaction within your team and with our clients. Awesome, great question, Samuel, thank you. And no problem about your mic. <laughs> Anything else, any other questions? These are awesome, keep them coming. We really, we decided to be here today because we really, we love doing this. We love giving back. Um, uh, you know, m many of us, especially Sam, he's been in your shoes before too. So uh, really there, no, no dumb questions here. Um, feel free to ask away. I have a question. Now that we're all teaching online and universities are online, will it matter to your company that students have completed their accounting courses online? Uh, I don't think it will. I mean, obviously, we are all having to adapt mm -hmm. to this reality, and we've all gotten better at getting us, getting ourselves off a of mute. Although I still mess up once in a while, <laughs> and remember that the camera's on. Uh, so uh, I think it's teaching us that uh, you know, in a way, it sort of accelerates a, a path that we were kind of already on. We just made it come faster. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, like for example, our firm's been an interesting learning experience in that we've always had the, the ability to work remotely, but now we know we can, and now we know mm -hmm. it's possible, and we've gotten mm -hmm. better at it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think that in a way, being more technologically savvy and, and being more used to this environment uh, will actually be a good thing. So we, mm -hmm. we recognize it's, it's, the, it's the way of the world and hard to know how much of this stays with us post-COVID. But these are skills uh, that I think are going to continue to be uh, very good. You know, one interesting thing, Professor, is that you know before, if you had if you had a client meeting, you might only bring one or two people with you, right? Because you don't want to bring a huge group to, a, especially if you've got to travel to a client. Mm -hmm. But if it's on video, you can have the whole team, right? And they they can all watch and learn and be exposed. So there are some benefits mm -hmm. and some server lining to some of this that I think it's mm -hmm. very beneficial. So all in all, I, I think uh, we're 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 taking the lemons and making lemonade out of it. So students are learning valuable skills being online learners, correct? That you will eventually uh, value in the workplace because that's where it looks like things are moving. So absolutely, mm -hmm. and that's why you know even even you know seeing Alyssa nod her head, right? Seeing her engage, mm -hmm. that tells me something, mm -hmm. right? So so it, that's why the video matters. It, it gives us a bit of a glimpse. Uh, I mean, obviously, we would love to be there in person. I'm only five minutes away uh, from Southwestern College. I could have driven there uh, really quick, uh, but you know, this is the next best option, or at least we get to see uh, students and people and clients. And so I think uh, it's still it's not the same, 
but uh, there's there's some good things that are that I think students are learning. It's it's not a, a negative. It's it's actually a positive going forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Andrea, I have one one question for you. Of course, you know my role at the college is is focused on internships, so that's where my mind is going to go. But I know that um, knowing that RSM and, and the large public firms typically will recruit in their junior and senior years, and you may dip into the sophomores. But what other experiences would be helpful for students to have, um, knowing that they might not be able to do an internship right away? What experiences are you looking for? Um, are there ways for them to learn, you know, audit versus consulting versus tax are interesting to them outside of the classroom setting? Yeah, that's a really good question. So in terms of, you know, what are we looking for as you're trying to build your resume in, in preparation for applying for that internship within firm? Um, I would say, I mean, be involved, whether it's with your community, uh, with your local campus school organizations, be involved, be an active member. Uh, if you can be, even try to take a leadership role in those student organizations. Um, what we look for when we look at a resume is we wanna see the whole picture, right? Yes, grades are super important, but we also wanna see, can you juggle multiple things um, while going to school? I know many of you also work as well. I think that's fantastic. If you can kind of show us, hey, I can juggle school and work, um, I think that shows that you have great work ethic. And that is what we look for too in candidates uh, when you come on board. Um, but in terms of, um, you know, what are other things you can do kind of outside of the application uh, itself and outside of the resume is really to network. Uh, it's to keep in touch or, or get in touch with different individuals that you meet uh, within the profession. So. David, Beto, Alejandra, and Sam today, um, we shared their email addresses. Um, and if you didn't get them, feel free to let me know. I can get you their email addresses. Get in touch with them. And what you can do too is, you know, sorry for volunteering this uh, for all of you, but um, reach out to them. See if they have time for some virtual coffee chat or like some time to be on the phone and just talk and get to know them. Um, I think they'd be more than happy to talk one-on-one -on -one with you. Um, and pick their brain on why they started in this career, where they came from, how they got to where they are today. Um, I think that's a really, really great way to learn how to pick, you know, audit versus tax versus consulting. Um, I think that's probably the best way to, to learn and try to choose which way you want to go is to get to know individuals who are in the profession and, and get to hear from them. And then once you connect with them, ask them to introduce you, you to somebody else within the firm. And it just, that's how you continue to build onto your network. Um, so, and then my other tip in terms of how to learn about which profession you wanna go into uh, is YouTube it is a great resource. I saw Genesis earlier posted a YouTube video on how to set up a LinkedIn account. I mean, YouTube is amazing. There are people who do vlogs, so video blogs on a day in the life of an auditor, a day in the life of a tax uh, professional, a day in the life of a consultant, specifically at public accounting firms. And you would be amazed at like, it, you you really kind of get to see firsthand like through their camera lens um, of what it's like to be um, doing their role um, and what a full day looks like. That's a really great way to see, you know, hey, is that what I see myself doing um, as my career? Um, so YouTube is also a really um, another great way um, uh, to learn about the profession. And then lastly, um, there's so, right, we're coming to you today from RSM. We're one of the accounting firms, one of the major accounting firms, but there's so many other firms out there. It's like, how do you even choose like which firm I want to I want to start with? Um, do some research into those firms too. Um, there are a lot of great firms. I recommend following their social media accounts, um, whether it's following their LinkedIn or following their Instagram page or even their YouTube channels. Um, a lot of accounting firms develop some really awesome content, um, and that's a great way to learn about their like what that firm offers to their employees, to their clients. 
um, it's just a great way to get to know that firm to see like, hey, is that the employer I want to be working with um, and working for, um, you know, when I start my career in public accounting? Awesome. I think that was an awesome question. <laughs> Edgy, I think we said 4.15, right? I think we're uh, way over already. <laughs> but I, I wanted to thank you all for being here. I know Alejandra had to sign off, but I wanted to thank Beto, David, Sam, and of course you, Andrea, for being here and sharing your advice and expertise with our students. It is of great value to them as they, you know, try to are learning about accounting and, and what are their career options and how do they really set their foot um, get get them the right footing, right? To to get in get ahead in their careers, and so uh, your time today is invaluable, and we are so thankful for for you taking the time today. So thank you so much. Yes, and thank, thank you. you for having us. Thank you, thank you very much, and thank you for the students who came. They really want to know more about accounting. Trust me. So thank you all for being here. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank one. you. Bye. Take care. Bye.